What's up everybody, this is Justin K. Prim and today we're going to be talking about different styles of cutting here on the Gem Cutters Craft. So I had an interesting question come from a customer this week that I felt worthy of a video discussion. So here in Bangkok, there are tons of cutting factories. This is one of the cutting hubs of the world. And we work with a bunch of factories here in order to offer cutting services to our customers. So one of the customers emailed me this week asking about, you know, what's the difference between some of the different factories and he was using some specific jargon that we had to really define in order to let our conversation go on. And I wanted to talk about some of these different types of cutting and some of these different kinds of words that people use around cutting to talk about quality and what they actually mean. So specifically, he was asking me, are they doing hand cutting? Are they doing machine cutting? Are they doing precision cutting? And the more that I thought about this, the more that I realized that none of these terms actually mean anything, and I'm gonna tell you why. So before we talk about different qualities of cutting, we should probably talk about the types of machines that people use, because this is a source of confusion and leads into some of these different words that don't mean too much. So in today's modern cutting world, there's pretty much three types of cutting machines that people might use around the world. Uh, one of them is going to be the jam peg. This is sort of the old-fashioned, traditional way developed in Europe, spread into South America, into India, into Thailand, into some other parts of the world. Then we've got the handpiece machine. This is most popularly developed in Japan, spread into Sri Lanka, and now spreading into some different places like Africa, uh, a little bit here in Thailand, and a little bit in America and other places. And then finally, you've got mass machines. So these are very much American machines. They are the most mechanized and the most modern types of machines that are available. And these are mostly used in America, Russia, the UK, and pretty much almost always in hobbyist cutting circles or hobby cutting circles gone professional. So those are basically the three types of machines that exist. They all have their own techniques and their own ways of cutting the stones, but they all pretty much end up doing the same thing. They make a faceted stone. Now, whether the faceted stone is good or bad, that's really gonna be up to the cutter. So now let's talk about cutting qualities and some of the types of language that we hear around the world as we look at gem cutting. First thing, let's talk about precision cutting. This is one thing that you hear a lot on the internet and just around precision cutting. Now, if you're in America, usually precision cutting means the meat points are good, the polishing quality is good, the proportions are good so that you don't have a window. But usually when people say precision cutting, what they're meaning is mass machine cutting in America. So that's one definition of precision cutting. Now let's jump over to Geneva where we have a long tradition of cutting super tiny precise watch stones to go around the bezel of a watch. These are also called precision cutting. And when you go into Geneva and you talk to cutters there, what they call their work is precision cutting. The reason being, they have to do super tiny stones with very, very precise tolerances, and those are more precise than normal jewelry tolerances, therefore they're calling that precision cutting. What they're doing in Geneva and what they're doing in America are not the same thing, yet they're both called precision cutting. Now let's talk about machine cutting. Machine cutting can also mean a couple different things depending on where you're at. If you're in, let's say, if you're in America, Machine cutting might just be mass machine cutting as opposed to hand cutting or jam peg cutting. If you're in Thailand, and this is the way that I've heard it used almost exclusively, machine cutting usually means Korean machine cutting, which means meli. So Korean machine being a type of faceting machine that is kind of developed towards super fast, super tiny cuts, melee cuts. So these are 3mm, 2mm, 1mm, you know, all those side stones that we see in the sides of our rings or in pave and micro pave settings. These are all melee. And when the melee manufacturer wants to promote that they are doing very good quality, they call it machine cut, as opposed to, I guess, hand cut. Then we have hand cut. Hand cut means literally nothing. I guess the idea maybe comes from hand cut as opposed to machine cut, meaning not cut by a mass machine or not cut by one of these machines that they use for melee, but cut by a jam peg, meaning the stones on the end of a stick 
and the stick is stuck into the end of a jam peg, and there isn't this indexing and angle system that we see in the handpiece machine or in the mass machine. But when a gem cutter cuts on a mass, they're also using their hands. And when a gem cutter is cutting on a handpiece, they're definitely holding that handpiece in their hand. And when a gem cutter cuts on a jam peg, he's holding that stick in his hand. So I think probably the phrase hand cut means the least of all because all gemstones are hand cut, unless they're cut by a robot, which is kind of a different thing that we don't really see very much in big stones. There are robots here and there that are cutting melee sizes, and I've heard now that there are robotic machines that can cut medium size centerpiece stones, but for the most part, most of the gemstones in the world, whether they be melee, medium sized stones, or super large pieces, they're all cut by hand. So using the phrase hand cut isn't very helpful to anyone because it doesn't really mean anything. Machine cut, I think, is very confusing because then people think it's as opposed to jam peg cut, but that's not really what it means. And precision cut also is meaningless. And I want to look at some samples now to show you why the phrase precision cut isn't very useful. So let, let's look at some samples. So here we've got a synthetic sapphire cut in a tie factory not very good, bad me points, decent polish, nothing to write home about. So this could be, I guess, called hand cut if you really wanted to use that term, I wouldn't, but just as a starting point. Um, when we're talking about cutting communities and cutting cultures, and let's just use Bangkok for example, because I know this one well, everyone pretty much uses a jam peg machine, but not everybody cuts the same way. We've got a hugely varying quality of cutting represented here, just in Bangkok, let alone some of the other cutting centers in Thailand. So starting point, we'll start with the bad cutting. The very cheap, very fast, not well done stone. Now let's look at another stone, also from Thailand, but what I would call a more precision cutting factory. The, the quality of the cut is higher. We've got nice meat points, nice reflection, nice proportions, great polish. This is a good stone. And it doesn't matter that it was cut on a jam peg because the cutter took the angles into consideration and cut a well done stone. Now let's compare a high quality jam peg cut stone with a high quality handpiece cut stone. See if you can tell the difference. Can you tell just by looking which one is which? They're both very well done. Cushion shape, mix cut, nice reflection, nice meat points, nice polish. So in this situation, the larger stone is the handpiece stone. The smaller stone is the jam peg stone. But actually, it doesn't really matter because they're both pretty much the same. They both look great. They both have exactly what we want out of a well-cut stone. Good proportions, good meat points, good polish. That's all that matters. It doesn't matter if it was cut on a jam peg. It doesn't matter if it was cut on a hand piece. It doesn't matter if it was cut on a mass machine. What matters is, did the cutter know what they were doing? And any cutter that knows what they're doing will use their machine to the best of their abilities to try to get the most beautiful stone. So when customers send stones to me, I don't use the phrase precision cut and I don't use the phrase native cut or hand cut. We say good quality or cheaper because that's really what you're, what you're looking for. Are you looking to pay more for better quality? Or are you looking to pay less and you don't care too much about the quality because you, you just need to make a cheaper stone? Probably because your material's not worth that much. And that's always how we differentiate things between our cutting factories. Is your material cheap? Are you trying to save money? If so, go with this one. The proportions aren't gonna be as good. There's probably gonna be a bit of a window. The polishing isn't as good, but it's still good. Or are you having really great material? We can send it to this factory and we're gonna get top of the line meat points, polishing, proportions, everything well cut. Both factories using a jam peg, doesn't matter. It's really just about the cutters and about the expectations on the cutters. Are they using a loop? how much time do they have to finish the stone, et cetera, et cetera. Now let's talk about precision cut stones, mast cut stones. So here we've got two. One was precision cut on a handpiece, one was precision cut on a mast. But here's the thing, in this situation, the mast one is the red one, the handpiece one's the orange one, and this mast cut stone isn't very good. In fact, it was cut by me on a mast, one of my first stones I ever cut, bad meat points, inconsistent polish. The proportion's good. I mean, it, is, it doesn't have a window, but this is not a precision cut stone. It's cut on a mass machine, 
by an American cutter, but it's not precision cut because it's not a good stone. So it doesn't matter if you're cutting on a mass machine or not, that's not what makes precision cut. Precision cut means you're a good cutter and you know what you're doing. Whereas this stone, which is cut on a hand piece, is a great stone because the cutter knew what they were doing. Perfect round shape, no window, nice meat points, great polish, beautiful stone. Now what about that Swiss cut, precision cut? What is that all about? So as I said, the Swiss cutting industry is all about the watch face, right? They're cutting those tiny, tiny stones to go around the watch and they need to be super, super precise. So when you need to cut 30, 40, 50 stones that all have to go together to make a perfect ring to go around your watch bezel, you need very, very precise cutting. Every table has to be the same size. Every stone has to be the same exact angles, same exact index, same exact millimeters to the hundredths of a decimal place. That's why this is called precision cutting as well, because this is precision in its tolerance, meaning if it's 2.33 mm, it's not 2.34 mm or 2.32 mm, it's 2.33, and their tolerance is plus or minus 0 0.01 a hundredth of a millimeter smaller if it has to, or it has to be exactly on size. This is very, very hard to do, and there's a reason why they call this precision, and there's a reason why these stones are very, very expensive. These are probably some of the most expensive stones in the industry because the tolerances are so high, they need a special machine to cut it, and they still have to cut hundreds of stones you know, per week. The cutters need to cut maybe 20 stones per day, so this is hard to do precision cutting. And now just a couple more examples of not good cutting, whatever you want to call it, hand cutting, cheap cutting, low end cutting, these are those types of stones. We can see great color, not great meat points, windows, questionable polish, not terrible, not the worst, but not amazing either. And finally we could see just one more example of a bad stone, it's the worst one that I could find in our collection. This is a Peridot, and there's not really much you can say good about it. Bad cutting, bad proportions, decent polish, bad meat points, window. So this is a stereotypically badly cut stone. Not because of the jam peg, but because probably the cutter didn't have a loop and needed to cut this, the entire stone in 10 minutes. So that's what happens when you have to do that. Now, of course, there's cutting centers all over the world. You know, Bangkok's a big one, Jaipur's a big one. They're cutting a lot of locally mined stones in different places in Colombia, Israel, Sri Lanka, and then of course, in the United States, where we have sort of the end market cutters. So there's lots of different types of cutting, lots of different qualities of cutting, and of course, the machine that you use doesn't dictate the quality of the stone that you cut, it's your experience level. It's how much you've practiced, it's how good you are at knowing what you're doing and seeing the stone that's gonna make the difference. So finally, what about machine cut, right? Because we mentioned machine cut, what does that mean? What are they talking about? This one's very hard to show on the camera because they're just so small. Here we have everything from 3mm, which are the two bigger ones on the one side, down to one and two millimeter. So there's a rundown of some of the different terms and terminology that we see and hear in various parts of the world in the gem and gem cutting trade. So I hope that was informative, whether you're the gem buyer who's looking to have stones cut or recut, or maybe you're the gem cutter yourself. It all comes down to the quality of the cutting and the experience of the cutter, not the machine they're using or the locality where they're cutting at. This has been Justin K. Prim with the Gem Cutters Craft out here in Bangkok, and I will check you guys next time.